Hello, welcome to our educational video on desktop computer connectors. Today, we'll explore the various connectors found at the back of desktop computers, their full names, uses and origins. But first, we have to talk about data processing. Data processing is what computers do. They transform data into information. What's the difference between those two? Think about pancakes. When you want to make pancakes, you gather ingredients, flour, eggs and milk. Then you process these ingredients. You mix and bake. In the end, you have pancakes. It's just the same with data and information. Data are the loose ingredients that you need to combine to get information. Combining that data, processing that data, is what the computer does. When we put data into the computer, we call it input. When we extract the information from the computer, we call it output. Let's look at a basic, classic computer. A screen, a keyboard and a big box. The keyboard is for input, to enter data. The screen is for output to read the information. The box is called the CPU, the Central Processing Unit. This is where the magic happens. Everything connected to the Central Processing Unit is called a peripheral. There are peripherals for input, such as a keyboard or a microphone, and there are peripherals for output, such as a screen or headphones. You even have peripherals for both such as a USB flash drive. To transfer data from input peripherals to the CPU and to send processed information from the CPU to output peripherals, we need to connect these peripherals to the CPU. To do that, there are a lot of different connectors. Understanding these connectors is essential for correctly connecting peripherals and ensuring smooth communication within your computer setup. In this video, we will go over some historical connectors. Not all of these are still in use, but it's still a good idea to know what was in use in old computer systems. One of the classics is the PS2 connector, which stands for Personal System 2. This connector, introduced by IBM in 1987, is commonly used for different inputs, and most typically to connect keyboards and mice to the CPU. Moving on, we have the VGA connector, or Video Graphics Array, developed by IBM in 1987. It transmits analog video signals and has become a standard for video output, especially for regular computer monitors. Following VGA, we have the DVI connector, or Digital Visual Interface, introduced by the Digital Display Working Group in 1999. DVI transmits both digital and analog video signals, providing higher quality display options. For more compact devices, like Mac laptops, there is the Mini DVI connector, a smaller version of DVI introduced by Apple. Additionally, we have the DisplayPort connector, developed by VESA in 2006, which transmits digital audio and video signals and supports high resolutions. Apple also introduced the Mini DisplayPort connector in 2008, a smaller version of DisplayPort commonly found on their devices such as the MacBook. HDMI, or High Definition Multimedia Interface, is another crucial connector developed by a consortium of companies in 2002. It's widely used to transmit high-definition digital audio and video signals. In the realm of audio connections, we have the Mini Jack connector, a standard analog audio connector found in various devices. The Jack connector is one of the older connectors still used today. It gained a lot of popularity when it was used for the Sony Walkman in 1979. The Toslink connector, on the other hand, transmits digital audio signals using fiber optics. It was developed by Toshiba, hence the name, in 1983 for digital audio applications. 
It ensured very high quality audio, but never replaced the widely adopted mini jack. Shifting to storage connections, the PATA connector, or Parallel ATA, connects hard drives and optical drives, like CD-ROM and DVD, to the CPU. Dating back to 1986, when it was developed by Western Digital and Compaq, it's an older standard. In 2000, it was replaced by SATA, or Serial ATA, which was developed for faster and more efficient data transfer. For external SATA devices, we have the E-SATA connector, standing for External SATA, which is an extension of the SATA standard for external applications. It came out soon after the regular, in 2004. On the networking front, the Ethernet connector is used to connect to a local network with or without internet access, standardized by IEEE for computer networking. It was developed in 1973 by Robert Metcalf for Xerox, so well before the internet took the world by storm. For more on how computers connect to each other and to the internet, check out our video about computer networks. Last but not least, the USB connector, Universal Serial Bus. It's a versatile connector introduced in 1996 to simplify the connection of a wide range of peripherals and devices. The advantage of USB is in the name, Universal. A lot of the previously mentioned connectors have been rendered obsolete and have been replaced by USB. There are different types of USB, such as USB-A, USB-B and USB-C, each with a slightly different connector and different speeds for data transfer. And there you have it, a comprehensive guide to desktop computer connectors. Understanding these connectors will help you make sense of all the different ports on your computer. They will help you with your setup and make sure you buy and use the right cables when necessary. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more educational content on this channel. Thank you.